you've tuned in to Coed Gaming. What's up guys, my name is Mike of Coed Gaming, and today, there is no intro. Retro gaming is better than modern gaming. Don't believe me? Here's five reasons. Reason number one, retro games do not require any installs or updates. This is a relatively new phenomenon with gaming these days, but it is still a standard in this day and age. Whenever you buy a game, you are almost always required to install it and then do a day one patch to fix whatever bug was left over from development. With retro games, even the day they came out, that did not happen. You buy a game, you put it in, you hit the power button, and you're playing. That's it. You and the game with nothing in between. Reason number two, retro games are actually different than modern games. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look at the Super Nintendo versus the Sega Genesis, the biggest gaming rivalry of the 90s, and debatably, one of the biggest gaming rivalries of all time. In the 90s, these two consoles were titans on their own, but when they went head to head, that's where things really got interesting. And what made it interesting is the games that were being displayed to show off the power of each system were genuinely different. Sega had Sonic the Hedgehog and Strider and Gunstar Heroes, where Nintendo had Mario and Zelda and Yoshi. The games were genuinely different, not only in the way they looked, the way they sounded, the way they played, the way they felt. Games these days are pretty much all the same. I mean, Call of Duty is released on just about every platform, and there's very few differences between them except maybe a resolution difference between one platform over the other. But really, that doesn't constitute the games being different. Yeah, you have your exclusives, sure, but consider the amount of multi-plats we have now as opposed to back then. Probably the biggest multiplat of the 90s was Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, and even those games were different. Reason number three, the attitude towards gaming back in the 80s and 90s was light years more fun and enjoyable than the attitude of gaming today. This one can be a little confusing if you don't know what I'm talking about from the very beginning. What I'm talking about is advertising, commercials, promotions. Look at the modern advertising of Wii U, PS4, and Xbox One. All of these commercials are built on making these systems seem sexy and flashy and stylish and sleek. Back then, that wasn't the goal. Back then, these systems were made to look fun and entertaining. And not only that, they would stomp out the competition by flat out mocking them in their own commercials. Could you imagine a Sony commercial where they flat out said the Xbox One is a pile of shit? They wouldn't do that today. Why? I have no idea, considering the fact that Sega had no problem doing it to Nintendo, and Nintendo had no problem firing back with their own advertising. Why this type of aggressive advertising is not embraced in the modern day, I have no idea. Considering the fact that gamers fight constantly over which system is better, you would think that companies would capitalize on this attention towards their systems and market their systems based off of this fighting. Take all the complaints that the fans give and incorporate that into their advertising. Not only would it make the fans feel so much more involved in their products, but it would give the gaming industry such an easy opportunity to capitalize on attention, make a ton of money, and really not have to do much. Just go on the forums, or go on 4chan for 5 minutes, and you'll have all the advertising you could ever need. Reason number 4. Retro systems do not fail nearly as much as modern systems do. The Red Ring of Death, among other things, have become notorious with modern games. Why? Because of how common they were. The PS3 had the yellow light of death, however it wasn't nearly as common, but it still affected a lot of people. Do we really hear about this a lot with retro systems? Does the N64 have something like this? Does the NES? Does the Super Nintendo? Not that I've ever seen, and even if it does, these systems are so basic in their design that you could almost always refurbish these systems and make them like new. Just recently, I bought an NES off Amazon, and it came with a new 72-pin connector. Not only does this mean that my games are going to play almost flawlessly every time, but it gives them a nice, tight fit, 
in the NES. They're not going anywhere. Try taking out the CD drive on a PS3 or 360 or a PS4 or Xbox One. It's probably going to be really difficult and it's probably going to void your warranty. These systems are so old, their warranties are gone anyway. Who cares? It's a black market now. You can do whatever you want. I've seen some of the most insane modifications done to these systems far outside of the warranty. Can't do that with these modern systems because then if they break, now you have no one to turn to. Bottom line, retro systems do not fail nearly as much as modern systems. And even when they do fail, fixing them is a lot more stress-free. And finally, reason number five, retro games are actually satisfying to beat. When you play through the campaign of any Call of Duty game, or really any modern FPS, considering the fact that our market is oversaturated with them, once it's all over, do you really feel like you just conquered a difficult challenge? Do you really feel like you just walked away from something that you didn't know whether or not you were going to beat? Or... Did you just get through it because now you want to play the multiplayer and you want to be able to say you got that done? Chances are, it's the latter. Why? Because modern games and their single player experiences are so lackluster. Are there games that are genuinely challenging these days? Yes, there are. However, to find these games, you need to either dig for them or look at indie games. And indie games are are, in my opinion, a shining example of what gaming is going to become. Why? You have regular people making these games, putting their heart and soul into these games, and making these games difficult. Why? Because they're doing what Nintendo did during the 80s. You see, Nintendo games back in the day did not have a lot of memory on the, the cartridges to make the games long. So to make up for it, Nintendo made the games punishingly difficult to add replay value and to keep people coming back. A lot of indie game developers don't have all that money coming in, so they do the exact same thing. I mean, look at Super Meat Boy. That's an example of a game that is long and ridiculously hard, but that's considered one of the best indie games of all time. Why? Because it harkens back to the roots of gaming. Why do you think that indie games get so much more attention than modern games? I'll tell you why, because these are the games that people want to play. These are the games that hook people in with difficulty and inc impressive art design, and impressive level design, and impressive soundtracks, things that other games do have, but indie games have such a magical charm to them because we know that they're not being made by some big corporation. <laughs> yeah. Instead, they're being made by regular people who love games, and they want to make games for us, just like Nintendo does. Granted, Nintendo has fallen off the horse a little bit in modern days, but... When you look at their first party games, you can see that they have not lost a single step. If you want to play a genuinely satisfying game from the modern day, you're probably going to have to stick to indie games. And if you want to play a genuinely satisfying game from way back when, just look at any of the classics on NES, SNES, Genesis, and Nintendo 64. Make sure to subscribe to Coed Gaming. And until next time, peace. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go try to beat TikTok clock. Fucking hate that level.